how are you all doing? It's August, this is Cozy Rosie Reads, and today is the start of another weekly reading vlog. It is Saturday morning, and I wanna share my really cool new t-shirt. It's this skeleton dancing in a flower field with like stars. I'm in love, I'm in love with this shirt. So it is about 8 a.m. on Saturday morning, and it is another wedding day, but it's very, very special because it's one of my best friends is getting married. She's having a micro wedding on the shore of Lake Michigan. So I get to go drive to the shore and she is just having a little wedding there. I wouldn't really classify it as an elopement, but it has an elopement feel. I think there's only gonna be like 18 people there as witnesses or guests. And I'm just gonna be photographing them for like an hour and then going home. It's a very different kind of wedding day for me, but I'm so excited for her. I'm so excited to oh, spend time with her. She's one of my dearest friends and she's getting married and I'm just so, so happy for her. So I'm really, really excited for today and hopefully I can take you all behind the scenes a little bit. I'm very excited for it. So in last week's reading vlog, I started reading Dark Harvest by Norman Partridge and I really, really thought that I would have it finished by the time I started this other weekly reading vlog. Um, but alas, I actually got completely distracted by my kindle and i don't know what it is about colder weather i think maybe it's because i got this in kind of like late summer early fall last year and i just fell head over heels in love with reading books on here i have not read from this in a very long time but once we had to pull out the space heater at night because our apartment was so cold i immediately felt nostalgic and wanting to read on my kindle so i pulled it up and i started reading a new manga series Oh my god, I'm in love with it. It's called The Girl from the Other Side. I can't remember the author's name, but I'll put it up here. And I'm absolutely loving it. I finished the first book in a day. I mean, it's easy to read. It's a manga. This is the most calming, I don't know the best word, like quaint, like almost like horror manga I've ever read from. I don't know how to describe it, but basically it follows this little girl named Shiva and her teacher she calls him teacher and he is this like nightmarish looking kind of creature and he's an outsider so from the first book you can gather that there is this kind of plague of cursed people and they're the outsiders and the insiders are humans and they are kind of killing people who they think have been cursed and just haven't been turned into outsiders so there's this very big division in this world, but it's just so quaint because Shiva and the teacher live together and they bake together and they forage for firewood and food. And it is so quaint and calm and like my perfect vibes. It's like cottage core, but also like this dark, beautiful, like art style and horror and story. And it's so cool. Like the teacher kind of looks like this really, really tall, slender deer man like kind of like the head of a deer i don't even know how to explain it it's just so beautiful so i've been reading this over on libby the free library app on my kindle and highly recommend highly recommend and that has been kind of taking up my reading time i just love it so much that i'm kind of distracting myself from my physical tbr which is something that makes me sad because i wish i could read both at the same time <laughs> you ever have that where you're just like, I just wish I had like eight sets of eyes and I could read two amazing stories at the same time, but unfortunately I just can't. So I did just start reading the second book last night. I'm hoping since I have such a leisurely day, I don't have to go photograph this wedding until 4 p.m. that I can finish the second book in the series and then I can pick up Dark Harvest. And I realized in my last vlog, I didn't even tell you all what this one is about, but I'm freaking loving it, friends. I'm freaking loving this. And I definitely think, I mean, I don't know how it ends, so I don't know if I can recommend it, but I feel like either way, this should be talked about or read more for specifically Halloween time, autumnal vibes, spooky stuff. Like, this is so good. So in this book, we open up with a very interesting narrator and i really really love it because the narrator definitely is this third kind of person but the way that the narrator talks to us it does seem like they are a little involved or they're very sarcastic or making assumptions and i really love that third party like we might never meet the narrator but you still feel like it is an authentic voice it's not just this omnipresent person telling you a story so i really really like that the first few lines read 
a Midwestern town. You know its name. You were born there. It's Halloween 1963 and getting on toward dark. Things are the same as they've always been. I just really love that. So it takes place on Halloween in a Midwestern town and it is following this young boy named Pete and his father is a severe alcoholic and we're getting a little bit of a backstory on Pete but a lot of things are just very alluded to in here like you're just supposed to know what the October boy is and the October boy is this kind of legend in this town where every Halloween or maybe it's like every other Halloween or maybe once every five years I don't know what the legend is about but there is this boy made from a pumpkin head and his body is made of vines he comes alive and starts killing people because he has a giant bloody knife like a butcher knife with him and the boys in the town who are of age can go and kill the October boy like that's just kind of like what the legend is about and it's so good so far I am really really loving it I'm hardly into it though I'm on page 36 absolutely loving the writing style it's very accessible it's fun feels very kind of like Stephen King writing style but with some very dynamic characters already and I'm just really really liking this this is perfect autumnal vibes and I'm really excited to finish this during this week's reading vlog. I'm hoping I can finish it by tomorrow. That's kind of my goal and I probably am going to force myself to put aside my manga series for a little bit so I can keep reading from my September TBR pile. So those are the books that I'm currently reading. Let's go ahead and get super cozy on the couch. I have a fall candle going and it's just so great and I'm definitely feeling all the moody autumnal vibes and it feels so good. And let's go ahead and read. I hope you're all doing really well. Thanks so much for being here, friends, and I will check in with you all a little bit later. Okay, so I finished book two of the Girl from the Other Side manga series. So good! Five stars! Highly recommend! And then I also got 35 more pages into The Dark Harvest. Freaking loving this as well. And this writing style is impeccable! It is so well done. Very Stephen King vibes. Very smart. A lot of curse words and swearing and it just has this like 1960s Stephen King kind of vibe like young boys making stupid decisions and I don't really know how to explain it but it's just so so good but now I need to finish my coffee I need to chug this I'm going to go for a walk a nice autumnal walk
Good morning, friends. Oh, I have a delicious cup of the Trader Joe's pumpkin spice coffee, and it's so good. It smells very strong, but it definitely doesn't taste as pumpkin-y or almost like clovey um, when you're drinking it. So I highly recommend. So it is Sunday morning and I did not vlog at all yesterday. And I'm really, really kicking myself that I didn't even get behind the scenes of yesterday's elopement slash micro wedding because it was so freaking beautiful. And we had so much time in the beginning to just get photos of the couple. It was 45 minutes of couples portraits, which I love. That's so much time. That's more than what I get on typical wedding days. So that was absolutely amazing. And it was so gorgeous. It was so cold by the lake. And it was, it felt like it was like in the fifties or sixties and it was just like windy and, but the sun was out and it was so magical and beautiful. And I'm just really, really kicking myself that I didn't get any behind the scenes, but yeah, it was really lovely. I'm going to be editing this morning. So I'm going to be putting on a nice show or a comfy movie or something like that while editing. And I'll share some sneak peeks later in this video, I think, and talking about them a little bit more because I haven't even looked at them yet so I'm gonna do that I'm really excited to look at them and edit them and call and see what I like but when I got home my partner and I had dinner together and then we are watching sex education from the beginning because my partner has never seen it so we just watched a few episodes of that and just wanted to relax because we both had the evening off and we had the day before that off. So we went on that beautiful hike and then we went to a little supermarket and we got some pastries and apple cider and it was just like the perfect kind of like morning off. Like that is what I want all the time with my partner. But unfortunately I just, I do typically always work on Saturdays. So that was just so nice. So I just wanted to kind of keep having that day off feeling with my partner, but um, I did get quite far into Dark Harvest last night. I am almost halfway through. I am on page 80 and there's only 190 something pages in here. So I am loving this so much. I love how dainty this copy is. Like I feel like I'm holding it with pinkies out every time. <laughs> it's so cute and tiny and like I love this cover and I love the shape of this book. It is annoying because the spine will never break so it's kind of annoying to read from but not bad and I honestly am still just very very shocked that I have seen nobody talk about this book. I have never seen anyone talk about this book on booktube or on bookstagram nothing this is the perfect fall halloween book it is eerie this is definitely while the cover kind of comes across as a little ya or middle grade it is definitely not there has already been a death in here like a murder there's been some gore there's been some stabbing it's very dark and eerie and like really messed up and i've learned a lot more about the premise so what i had said yesterday was a little off this is like a game that happens every year. This pumpkin comes alive and his, the pumpkin's whole goal, his name is October Boy, but they also call him Old Hacksaw Face or Sawtooth Jack. He's the pumpkin head guy and his goal, obviously it's a different pumpkin every year, but for some reason it has like the same personality and motive, like it just comes alive. It's very interesting. The pumpkin's goal is to get from the pumpkin patch where it's made into town and make it to the town church. And then he wins without getting killed. If he doesn't get killed, then he wins. All the kind of like 16 year old boys in the area, 16 or older, are locked in their rooms for five days without any food. And then they're released into the town at night while everyone else is inside and they have to go and try and kill this before it gets to the church. So it's like this game, this legend kind of game that happens every year and it's so interesting. I love the concept. I think it's super bizarre and scary and weird. This feels, while you're reading it, kind of like the movie Trick or Treat, and I love that. I love that movie so much, and it's just freaking vibes, okay? It's just freaking vibes. It's so good and weird, and the writing is so well done. I don't even know how to describe the writing, but it's just so smart. Like the word choices, the way sentences are structured, it's just very smart. And I feel like the easiest comparison I can just keep making is like Stephen King, where it's like, there is a very, very strong intention with this writing style. There's a very strong sense of story and visuals as well. Like Norman Partridge, the author here, really had a strong vision of what this world looks like and what these characters are like and their dynamic 
dualities and personalities and this small town in the 60s is just vibes and it's so well done and I want more people to talk about this book. So read it, read it and talk about it and tell me. Um, so my goal today is definitely to finish this. I'm so excited to finish it. Um, but I also have several other goals that I want to do today because um, the next few days for me are a little hectic. So that is my update. I'm going to keep drinking my delicious coffee and hop into some editing.
Good morning, friends. It's Monday, and yesterday was very chill. I edited for a lot of it. I forgot to share any sneak peeks, so I'll pop them up over here. I'm so happy with how they turned out. It, they're kind of blowing up a little bit on social media, blowing up in my terms. So that's been really, really nice. I love how they turned out. My clients absolutely love them, which means my friends, because they're my friends. They love them. That makes me so happy. And it was just really, really good. So I spent majority of my afternoon editing. Then I was feeling really restless and anxious. So I did go for a nice long walk and that definitely soothed my soul. My partner and I made some vegan chicken tenders from Trader Joe's and I made us some cauliflower soup. And we watched like three episodes of Sex Education and it was just really, really chill, which means I did not pick up my book until really late that evening, probably around like 9.30 at night. And I was like, I'm gonna finish it, I'm gonna do it. And then I didn't, I fell asleep while reading, but I am so close to the end. I only have 60 pages left, which is absolutely amazing. I am on page 131. I am still really enjoying this and the twist has been revealed. I feel like there are gonna be more twists, but I did not see this one coming. I was like, what? This is horrifying and gross and what? Why? So I think more answers will be revealed in this. I cannot spoil it. It's wild, friends. I am so excited to finish it. So I just got myself a warm up on my coffee. I'm going to go ahead and hop into this while drinking it. And then hopefully I can finish this pretty quickly and then I can run over to Goodwill because also yesterday I did film my October TBR video and I got a prompt for just horror, a horror book. And on my current bookshelves, I really don't have horror. So I wanna go to Goodwill and see if I can find any used horror books for my October TBR because I really don't have a whole lot of like super autumnal books and I definitely want more in my life because that's just a vibe. I want cozy horror mysteries and stuff like that too. Hello, Spazzy. But, so that's my plan. I'm hoping to finish this book quickly and if not, just read until my coffee's done and then get ready, go to Goodwill, and then I do have therapy at one. And then the rest of the day is kind of mine, but I do need to work on some edits and all that fun stuff. So I'll be working from home basically. So I just thought I'd take this morning for myself, try to calm down some anxiety that I have, treat myself to some Goodwill. I feel like I deserve it. It's been a while since I've gone thrifting and yeah my anxiety has just been really really bad the past few days and it's probably going to continue to be bad for the next few days as well with what I have going on um, in my personal life so I'm gonna do a little bit of uh, retail therapy but it is just like cheap used junk which I love that's that's the like if you want to warm your way into my heart it's just used stuff so let's go ahead and get into some reading <laughs>
All right, friends, it is a sunny, sunny Monday, and it has definitely turned around, which is great. I had therapy, and I was feeling still pretty anxious after therapy, so I went for a long walk, and my hair looks disgusting because I've been wearing a baseball hat all day, but I am just checking in to let you all know that I finished reading Dark Harvest by Norman Partridge. This should definitely be read more. This should definitely be talked about more. I enjoyed it so much. It was not a five-star read it was four stars but I loved the concept of this it's like one big Twilight Zone episode and they even reference Twilight Zone in here and like what it would be written as if it was an episode and it all takes place in one night and follows these very kind of like toxic masculine kind of boys and men in this town and relationships between fathers and sons and how corrupt and messed up it is and how you don't set your children up for success it's like a very big kind of almost like fable parable moral which i found really really interesting so i think this is such a wonderful read for spooky season for october for halloween if you're getting into the fall mood and you like horror stories this is incredibly gory and fantastical <laughs> and fun and weird and bizarre and I really really liked it. I think the writing style was so much fun. It was very fast paced and poetic and weird and I really enjoyed this. So overall four stars. I definitely recommend it if you are okay with gore and this like 1960s like masculine energy. It's pretty good. I actually really, really enjoyed this. So four stars. I'm very happy. So Alec is on his way to get us dinner right now. Just something really quick and easy. And I'm going to do the dishes and kind of clean up for a bit. And then when I'm ready to kind of settle in and I don't know, just kind of shut down for the evening, which might be pretty early tonight because I think Alec is going to be working on like homework and schoolwork and stuff for the rest of the evening. I'm going to start reading Interview with the Vampire by Anne Rice. I love this cover so much it is so bright and yellow and i love it so i'm gonna start this this will be the last book that i read for my winston <laughs> hello can you move can you move this will be the last book that i read of my october tbr and i really hope i can get through it before the end of this month which is only in three days already so i'm hoping i can get pretty far into this today so i can finish it by september 30th Good morning friends, it is Tuesday morning. I have been trying to stave off some anxiety, did some art journaling, and I thought I would chat with you all before I hop into some work to kind of like stay present, stay grounded, not let my anxiety brain travel off without me. So I realized yesterday I didn't even tell you all about my Goodwill trip in my haul and the book that I ended up finding there that I'm adding to my October TBR. So if you saw my October TBR, you were basically led to this vlog to find out what the last horror book is that I picked because I didn't really have a whole lot on my shelves and I wanted to pick something. So my Goodwill trip was so successful. It was a little embarrassing how much I got because my partner and I are starting to plan our wedding. We have two years. We're getting married in October of 2023. That's kind of like what we really want to do. We just have to solidify that with the venue still. But we did decide that we want to thrift basically all of the different decor items and 
all that stuff because it's so inexpensive and it's very us like we just thrift a lot and we find a lot of really random weird shit at thrift stores and we love bringing it into our apartment like we just love weird art funky like collectible stuff or i don't know like just we just like the eclectic look and feel um so I found a bunch of stuff there and ended up going home with three boxes of stuff um, like tablecloths. We're doing all eclectic different colored tablecloths and different colored vases for the table. So I got like all this like dark green and burnt orange and like all these different sizes and goblets. Our wedding is going to have all these different goblets for everyone to choose. Like they get to pick their own when they arrive and then you get to take it home with you. So that's going to be really cool very thrifted wedding so that was really successful but then of course i also got some autumnal sweaters because they have all their sweaters out so that was also very nice i love seeing all of their sweaters but i did pick a book for my october tbr and i found this there they actually had quite a few different mysteries and thrillers but I only left with this book and another one and also the Cezanne book that I showed in that montage um, for some collaging. I absolutely love the artwork in there. It's this huge chunky. Let me grab it. I wish I could share with you all like how heavy this book is. Like it is so heavy. It's not just like, oh, it's heavy. No, this is like heavy. This was 99 cents. I love thrifting, friends. It's the best. So I got this for my collaging and stuff, but I found a really awesome quote in here by Cezanne. And like, this is just huge, gorgeous, massive. Like this, look at that wingspan. <laughs> So this was a really good find. And then I found this book that I added to my October TBR and it is The Tooth Fairy by Graham Joyce. I've never heard of this one. Uh, she's got like green teeth. I don't really know what's happening there. This is definitely an old library copy, I believe. So I can probably remove that kind of crinkly sleeve thing that's going on. But I looked this up on Goodreads and people reviewed it as being incredibly dark, which is interesting because the cover to me comes across as very YA. <laughs> like it's just a little hokey. But it is all about this gang of normal young boys roaming wild around the outskirts of their car factory town, daring adults to challenge their freedom until the day Sam wakes to find the tooth fairy sitting on the edge of his bed. Not the benign figure of childhood myth, but an enigmatic presence that both torments and seduces him, changing his life forever. And here is my favorite trope of all time. Is she real or just a figment of his turbulent imagination? All Sam knows as he painfully grows from childhood to adolescence is that she is never very far away. But yeah, a lot of the Goodreads reviews say that this is really, really dark. This is, I think someone even commented and said like, this is not a book to start on Christmas Eve or Christmas morning. Like it's too dark. I love dark. I love gross things that have to like deal with like teeth and nails that is honestly like a huge fear of mine is like missing teeth and fingernails and stuff so like I feel like this is royally gonna creep me out perfect for October and then while I was there too there was a, another book by Graham Joyce there called dream side and it's all about lucid dreaming and these I believe university students who are studying lucid dreaming and they end up being able to travel to the same lucid dream together and then something happens and then years go by and they lose contact and now they're together and start having the same dreams again. I love that. I love books about dreams, surrealism. It just like really kooky, magical realism, speculative stuff. So I'm really happy with this pick. This was a good find. Those were the only books that I ended up finding though and wanting to take home. So this has been added to my October TBR. I'm really excited to read it. Now, friends, last night I did start reading Interview with the Vampire by Anne Rice. I'm shook. I'm a little surprised um, of how much this hooked me in so quickly. This hooked me in so fast. Like immediately, you're just straight into dialogue, pages and pages of dialogue, paragraphs and paragraphs of dialogue from this vampire named Lewis. And it totally wrapped me up by its little finger, just it got me right away. And I'm really surprised by that. I had no idea what to expect. This is just a very kind of cult classic popular book and I've always wanted to read it. I really didn't expect it to grip me this much though because I am having so much fun with it. 
I do genuinely enjoy the writing style, how it is all in this interview format, and it's just Lewis talking and then maybe taking like a few breaks every three or four pages. So I'm really liking this. I think it is such a good vibe. So I'm on page 48 and I am definitely looking forward to reading this and finishing it in the next couple of days. So if you're not familiar, because I'm not familiar, it doesn't really give a whole lot away. Also, my copy has severe water damage because um, it was thrifted. So this book immediately opens up with it's just all dialogue, basically. And it is the story of this vampire named Lewis and this young boy, probably in his like, he's probably like 25, who is interviewing Lewis. They met at a bar and they just start conducting this interview and Lewis is going through his entire life and talking about how he was turned into a vampire at the age of 25, what his life looked like, and he was turned into a vampire in like the mid 1700s. And he is from the New Orleans area and he lived on a plantation. His family was pretty wealthy and had some slaves and like it's just really rich with history and this really moody gothic environment that I just really really enjoy. There are just so many aspects of this that I'm really appreciating and the writing style is very accessible I feel and it's still beautiful like I am reading this with my eyes, but the images that I have in my brain are very, very strong. I think it feels like I'm just watching a movie, so it's very easy to read and my eyes are just kind of like flying across the page. At least for me, that is my experience with this. And I'm I'm honestly really enjoying it. Prior to that, I looked it up on Goodreads to see like what do average kind of people who are reading this, like what do they think? Because it is such a big pop culture reference kind of book. And a lot, it's just a lot of three stars. People are like, eh, writing style was bad or this kind of stuff. And I was kind of judging myself. I'm like, why do I like this writing style though? Like I do, I like it. So I'm really enjoying this. I am almost 50 pages through. It's a little over 300 pages. So I'm really hoping I can finish it in the next two days. I am really, really enjoying it. So I just need to like stay on track and focus on it a little bit. So that is that. I am going to start hopping into some work and emails so i will check in with you all a little bit later and hopefully i have some updates on interview with the vampire and yeah Good morning friends, it is 7.30 a.m. on Wednesday, I have to get ready for work, my part-time job very soon here, so I am going to conclude this vlog. Unfortunately, I didn't get that much further into Interview with the Vampire. I did get to page 56. I'm still really enjoying this. I'm hoping I can finish it by the end of October. If not, this is probably a book that I will continue into October because I am enjoying it so much. And there goes Winston screaming every morning. So hopefully I'll have this done by next week's reading vlog. Thank you all so incredibly much for being here. I hope you enjoyed this random, weird, eclectic little vlog. Hopefully it was enough fun content for you all. I appreciate you so much and I will see you all very soon for my next video. Stay cozy my friends. Bye!